Negative step forward. Your point is, we see something that exists. It has to come from somewhere. That somewhere is God. No? Then, then correct. Can nothing make something? Is the same question I've asked. Mm. So, if you were to ask me, I will tell you no, okay. because nothing. I'm sure you know there are several levels of nothing. The nine levels of nothing. Okay. If I give you, if I give you some presents and you open the box uh -huh. and there's nothing in there, uh -huh. it says there's no present. But I gave you a box and the box is not empty. It's got air in it. Okay. Space in it. Okay. Molecules, gravity, quantum fluctuations. Right. right. It's not nothing. So nothing has different levels. The nothing I'm talking about is nothing that it has no possibility of giving rising rise to anything at something. So can absolute I, nothingness. Can I can I sum up your point of view by saying that anything that exists has to come from something or somewhere? You again jumping to well, I'm, I'm, I'm why, why, to rephrase why, No, no. Why are you trying to formulate and think? Oh, what is the argument leading towards? Just let's understand this simple thing first of all. Can nothing give rise to something? Can nothing make something? And the nothing I'm defining to you now is the nothing that is absence of everything. And that everything includes space, time, quantum fluctuations and possibilities. Absolutely okay. nothing. You've, you, I won't lie, you have stumped me with quantum fluctuations because I'm not sure I understand that to the level that you do. But if I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to understand... Was my statement, that question, very difficult to understand? Well, all right. You're asking the question, can can nothing give rise to something? Yeah. And your answer is no. Yeah, what is your answer? In, in which case, I think an equivalent statement is, something cannot come from No, 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 no. that's my answer, but I want... No, 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 I'm, I'm, but I'm just... I'm, no, 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 I want to know your answer. You're, you're saying... I want to know your answer, not mine. Well, that, that depends on exactly what it is that you're saying, but you're, are, are you saying that something cannot come what's from it, nothing? What's your name? Jacob. Jacob. I am Mansur Jacob. Biblical, by the way. <laughs> Jacob, I am Mansur. Pleasure Biblical. speaking to you. And you. I want to know from your perspective and whether we need a paradigm shift. Remember what I said? Right, whether we my, need a paradigm my, shift. My, so, my, my perspective is. Yeah. Um, yes. Because even if you believe in a God as the absolute core basis of truth that gives rise to everything, then you believe in a God that exists. And if that God exists, then that God is something. And that something must then come from nothing. And, and it's not its not my argument, it's a very common one. It's an argument of infinite regression. If the universe was given rise to by God, then where does God come from? Oh, God came from nothing, so nothing can give rise to something. So I think the, the difference between our perspectives is that you believe God is the truth. And as an atheist, I suppose I believe that what we see is the truth. Okay, so you've made several assumptive errors there, errors coming from assumption. Okay. Um, we as Muslim or theists in general, uh -huh. we do not believe God came from something okay. or from nothing. You believe that God is? Uh, I will tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you. So your assumption that God came from nothing and then you answer that question, yes, nothing can make something, was mistaken but, already. But why is that so... If, if you're allowed to make the assumption that God just is and there was no, 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 no nothing no, no. previously, not, look, remember, why am I not allowed am, to make the assumption that the universe just first, is and there was no nothing Firstly, previously? firstly, I asked you a question, can nothing come from, can something come from nothing? Mm -hmm. And you should justify that. That, Likewise, I should be able to justify my, my statement too. So I would like to ask you again, once again, from your own perspective, in your own critical, rational thinking, mm -hmm. Can nothing make something? And the nothing that I have described already? Yes. I think the way that you phrase the question, the answer can only sure. be yes. So how can nothing make something? Can you just show us some justification? Oh God, I absolutely no idea. But I don't think I've got any less of an idea than the theist who says that God no, no, just no, no, exists. No, no, no. And remember, it, remember, you, you now an atheist, if you are one, Jacob, you are on the defense to justify your position, not me. Well, I'm because under, I am I'm not. I'm under defence because you repeatedly asked me. Quite no, no, I have, I have made you into defence, and I would like to hear a coherent, cogent, rational explanation, uh -huh. a justification of your statement that yes, something can come from nothing. Go ahead. Okay, the, the argument is as I believed previously. My my position is no different from yours. If I try to say that everything that we see exists and just does, I don't think I'm making a very different argument from you. 
saying that God exists and just us. I, we, we both face the same issue. I'm trying to explain how the universe exists apropos of nothing, which I can't. And you're trying to explain how God exists apropos of nothing, which you can't. But I don't think we're too different on that page. I think regardless of whether you believe in a God or not, the, the, um, the reliance on the, on, on the point of something has to come from somewhere, and that doesn't solve either of our issues. I can't explain how this came from nowhere, and I don't think that you can explain how God came from nowhere. Remember, and as I say, it's a, it's a very old point. Remember, Jacob, remember, Jacob, your failure to justify should not be imposed on me, as like I would okay, also, okay, yeah. right? So I want you, on your own merit, on your own critical thinking, justify the assertion that you've just made, or you can take you know, take it back and say, actually, okay. no. Let so me, I give you the, either options. Let, let, me, let me answer it so. Whatever you would say about no, no. your belief or God existing. You, you, you don't even know what I'm no, going to no, say. No, I don't, I don't know. So like, whatever it's you irrelevant. Say, I will copy and paste. No, it's irrelevant. I would like to know, you as a critical thinking individual, I would like to hear some no, justification. No. I've, I've accepted that I can't, but the point that I'm But you made an assertion. Is, You've made an assertion you're unable to justify. So you, you've made a faith-based oh, claim. I don't know whether you... So you made a claim based on faith. So uh, it's a blind faith. A claim based on faith? Yeah, it's a blind faith, isn't it? You can't justify it. No, no, no. I've, I've made a claim of ignorance. I've, I've made a claim that I don't know where all this comes from. Yeah, you might be a flying spaghetti monster, right? It and you might can't, be. Oh, that's what might, you're saying. Might and you don't even know. Be. That's the difference between you and me as a theist, but, as a Muslim. No, no, no. no. But the, the point that I'm attacking... Which you will see. The argument of something must come from somewhere, I don't think solves your problem any more than it solves mine. Brother, one second. Uh, out of curiosity, what's your religion? Uh, you see, you, I can see you in the background, so I'm not here. It's okay. What are you? <laughs> okay, yeah, fine. So, so they're, they're happy for me to represent as, as the Muslims here, like all the brothers are saying, I'm sure my brother will be happy too. Mm. So, you said you cannot justify it. If I said nothing doesn't even have the possibility of making something and yet you make an assertion that it can make something, isn't that a contradiction in terms? Are you logical and reasonable? I hope so. <laughs> then if you, if you are logical and reasonable, you should say a nothing that doesn't even have possibility of giving rise to anything, it cannot give rise to anything. That's reasonable assertion. That's so, being logical and rational. So do you, do you believe that there ever was nothing? Now I'm telling you, nothing that I've described. That nothing, if it doesn't even have possibility of arising, making anything, then you cannot simply say, I am actually a rational human being, a reasonable human being, a logical human being, and then yet claim but we're, that it can make something. We're, we're talking about the transition from nothing to from, from nothing to this. I'm just telling do, you, do you. Do you believe the, that there ever was a nothing? No, 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 you're you're not answering the question. You're going into another question to put me now in justifying my position, which I will I, do. I've already stated my answer, I hope, but I will. I hope that I've already answered your question. No, my you haven't. Was, you haven't. Well, I've said yes. You have said yes, but we would like to know as theists your justification for it and you say you have no justification so now the question would be are you being reasonable are you being reasonable i'll explain my, are you a reasonable my, atheist my justification is um it's it's because of the phraseology question sorry it's because of the way the question is phrased right i think you have to answer that question with yes can can something arise from nothing i think that question can only be answered yes because regardless of whether you believe in a god or not we all seem to believe that all this started off as nothing and in your world view there was nothing then a god then this and in my world view there was nothing and then this let me just help you a little bit before you regardless. make several mistakes again there was never a time when god was absent so it wasn't nothing okay, and okay, then so god okay. no, 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 no. just to help you around so you keep in asserting to then refute this position when this position is a straw manning incorrectly. Sure. So, your position that something can come from nothing 
while I define nothing doesn't even have possibility of giving rise to anything, is this a reasonable assertion to make? Well, but you, so if you say, if you say there was never a point when God was absent, then you say there was no, no, never no, no, enough. No. I'm talking about something and nothing. Thought. Remember, you're now on a defense to represent the atheistic community if you're an atheist. I'm trying to answer the question. Right. So, agnostic, for the record, agnostic. Fine. Jacob the agnostic. Okay. <laughs> Monster the Muslim. Jacob the agnostic. Yeah. Wrap a name if I ever <laughs> With no offense, by the way. No, no. Right. So, nothing I've defined to the ninth level of nothingness, uh -huh. which is the, even the absence of possibilities, that it doesn't even have a possibility of making anything. That means if I were a rational human being, a critical, reasonable, logical human being, I would say, according to that definition, the answer has to be categorically no. Nothing cannot make something because it doesn't even have a possibility of making anything. Okay. So, so when you made that assertion, were you being reasonable? If you having if, heard the definition. If you've stuck, well, to, not to be too. If you study philosophical logic, right? You're saying that. Um, your, your answer to the question, can nothing give rise to something, is no. Based on the definition of nothing? Uh, just the, the way I phrase that question. I'm no, based on the question. definition of nothing. Sure. The answer has to be no. The has to if be you no. don't say then no then and say yes, then, then we have to agree that you are being unreasonable. That is logically equivalent. That is logically equivalent to saying that something must arise from something. Something must arise from nothing. Right? Something must come from something. Something must come from something. Your yeah. God, your God exists. No, 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 no. Let's let's take. No, no, no. Your, your God no, no, no. exists. That's an easy one. Hang That's on, yes hang on, no. Jacob, yes, Jacob, Jacob. Exists. Let's go back your to God, nothing no, and something. No, no, no. Come on. Your God exists. Always exists. Your God is something. Yeah, he always existed. So where did your God come from? Always existed. There's no question right, of well coming then, from. And then, and then this is where I'm trying to build bridges. Mm -hmm. Your God always existed. My universe always existed. Fine. It doesn't need a Fine. And so, your God so, doesn't so need let's, a let's, let's, now, let's now come to an understanding of a reasonable one. So your universe, by definition of nothing that we explain, your universe has to have existed always. Um, there could not have been a time where it was absolutely nothing to begin with. Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. So do you believe the universe existed always? Uh, I believe that the conditions for the universe to arise existed always, yes. Uh, so I believe in a big bang. And then it comes down to what you consider do you, to be a universe. But for, do you, for the purpose do you, do you believe? Do you always. believe the universe existed 17 billion years ago? Yes, but in, in, some, in some context. In what context? Okay, so... When did um, time began? Big... Well, about 17 billion years ago. No. Uh, sorry, okay. sorry, about 13.7 billion years ago. But, but um, to a quantum physicist, there was something prior to the Big Bang which existed, which allowed the conditions for the Big Bang to... But I, I don't understand this stuff well enough. Okay. But I'm saying regardless, no even, even if you Something take, existed. Something existed. Okay, so now we are on a common ground. Something has to always be in existence to explain us, our existence. You cannot have a time in inverted quotes in the past where there was absolute nothingness. Because from absolute nothingness, you will get absolute nothingness. There has to be always something. If Either it's right, the universe if, if, or it's conditions or whatever it was, always something. If, if by nothingness you mean like an absence of matter. Absence of everything. What, uh, an absence of Everything. Uh, so an absence of matter is it different from an absence of laws of physics? No, absence of matter. everything includes laws of physics. <laughs> then, I, then I'm not well educated enough to answer that question, is the honest answer. No, no, the answer is if there is such a thing called nothing, which doesn't have anything, not even laws and possibilities, yeah. then from that nothing, you will get nothing. Something cannot come from it. That is a reasonable, logical, rational position to take. And it's not rocket science, it's common sense. Because we've defined what nothing is. Um, okay, I believe that if there is such thing as a universal set of laws of physics, they existed prior to the Big Bang. I think that's the best way I can answer your question. Yeah. I've also got somewhere to be in about an hour, but it was lovely to chat to you. Yeah. If we had time, uh, the, um, no, if the you YouTube had time, videos get a lot of views. Um, if we had time, Jacob, we would have we'd shown you. We, sure. No, we'd have shown you how I'm sure you the will. position sure you we have is justifiable. But of course, you have to go. But of course, okay. Pleasure again. speaking okay. to you. And, to you. and if you ever come across again, we can continue this talk. Sure yeah. Nice Take care.
Just to summarize, what was the point that he was slipping on and he got, kept on going back to you to try and get you to answer a question? Yes. Yeah. This is something that I think we should um, take note and learn from. Atheists for the last few decades have been trying to put the Muslims or theists in general on defense. Like, prove the existence of God. Time has changed. We've turned the table around. We are now putting them on the defense to justify their atheistic position and you will find that they are now struggling. They're struggling to justify their own position. Like, how many times did I have to tell him what nothing is? Again and again. And still he thinks, maybe this nothing can give rise to something. When common sense tells us, if you have such a concept, you will get nothing out of it. So that is why Professor Lawrence Krauss, when he wrote a book called The Universe from Nothing, it was a book of deception. Do you know why it's a book of deception? Because many of his followers thought, now we have a reason to believe the universe came from nothing. Because it says by, on the title, the universe came from nothing. Yeah? But in the book, he explains it, even though a little, what he means by nothing. His nothing is something. There's quantum fluctuations, gravity, and so on and so forth. And so forth. So gravitational fields and other things like that. So it's not nothing, it's something. They have to deceive. In fact, I actually asked him when I went for a book signing, I asked him I, deliberately. I mean, I had to pay for this book to, to ask him that question, right? I would have bought it anyway, just to see what he's saying. Why are you deceiving? He said, I, I have explained my nothing in the book. So I said, what do we call it nothing then? So they want to differentiate between a philosophical nothing and a scientific nothing. That is the deception, that is the trick. So now, as you see, the shift that he has is trying to make like, oh, you have the same problem. Look at how he's trying to, and then you have to defend it. There was nothing to begin with, and then God came and so on. I had to correct him a few times again. We don't believe God came from nothing. God was always there. So which makes sense? God was always there or the universe which was always there or not. Because he knows the universe was always there. I asked him a question about 17 billion years ago, 18 billion years ago. He knows there is no such thing as a 17 billion years ago because time itself began much later. Yeah, 16.3 billion years or something, eight. So time had a beginning. So you can't say a time beforehand because this is not meaningful, meaningful. So then he has his own perception of the reality saying there's conditions, the physical laws, when there is no physics to begin with, for this universe that gave rise to this universe. That would have been an interesting talk when we could have established then the whatever you consider that to have been there present has to be always there. Because if it wasn't always there, same problem again. Nothing cannot make something. So if you now put some reason and critical thinking in place and you will see that whatever was always there to give rise to this something like our universe, this transformation to happen, it cannot happen unless the thing that was there is self-aware, conscious, has a will, possesses a will, an intent, and has knowledge and power or energy. If these conditions are absent, this universe will not be transformed into what it is now. It's impossible, Russian. And that is the discussion we are having week after week in Speaker's Corner, and yet our atheist friends are not learning. So we would like to we would like to invite our atheist friends to be people of critical thinking. We are asking you to be people of critical thinking. Don't think you are someone that you're telling Muslims to be critical thinking. Islam is the one that developed the whole scientific methodology and gave you the Renaissance in Europe. I'm not just making a claim, go and study and find out. If it wasn't for Islam, you'd be in dark ages. What about the false equivalence that he gave that? He said, oh, yes. Yeah, you're in the same position. That's what he's trying to say. He said, Which the universe we're always existed. God always existed according to you. So we're equal. Can I walk away now? <laughs> like, why do you think they try and do this? Yeah. Again, firstly, in, in, in what I understand um, from this is just trying to deflect it back to me. Yeah. Like to atheists, put the atheists on the defense. And then you'll have Muslims trying to justify. But that's what I was trying to do anyway. I was justifying my position of believing in a God to begin with. And that's the question that I went through in a pro systematic process for him to follow through my critical thinking. Yeah. Okay? So the reason they want to do that is just to move the goalpost and say, why don't you prove it? 
back to the same tactics they used to do. Okay, you defend the proposition that God exists. No. Yeah, yeah. So we want to make it back on their table, on their foot, to justify their position. This is a paradigm shift in the Dawah. Because for too long, we've taken the onus on us unnecessarily. Exactly. We don't need to. Exactly. So again, those of you who are learning from this uh, uh, exchange, I highly recommend you go into Sapiens Institute and listen to brothers like Sabor, Jake Branketella, listen to Hamza Zorsis, Dr. Latif Usman Latif. Listen to them and go into Fort Adventure Podcasts, brothers. Sharif, uh, Abdul Rahman, Jake, Issa Ponders, and see where we are changing the paradigm. That, like I was telling uh, uh, Jacob, uh, the agnostic friend. <laughs> yeah. Now, we are bringing again now arguments on an academic level to demonstrate to people why our theistic position, not only reasonable, rational, but it is what critical mind, critical thinking demonstrates one should take that position. So it is no longer it's, it's a blind faith. It is no longer all oh, Muslims, you know, you just believe because God says so. We can tell you why we believe with the philosophical justification, with the critical mind and critical thinking, and you will have no reason to disagree with us. If you disagree, like I asked him, if you disagree that something can come from nothing when the nothing doesn't even have possibility of bringing something, then you're not reasonable. Your position will be unreasonable. Someone who is not using critical thinking, not being rational and reasonable. Yeah? So this is the next step of Dawah. Go to these two places that I mentioned at least and try to learn about how we are using the arguments from the Quran and Sunnah. This is not philosophy. The Quran says, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay, am humul khaliqoon, am khalaqu samawati wal ard, bal la yuqinoon. This is the argument I was using. Am khuliqu min ghayri shay, why they created from nothingness? Is it philosophy? This is the kalam Allah. This is Allah is describing us to use our critical thinking about can something come from nothingness? Can nothing create? So this is what we are saying, brothers and sisters. We are not using philosophy just for the sake of arguing. Our da'wah should be rooted in the Quran and Sunnah and hopefully we believe wholeheartedly that it is so. The brothers who are involved, they are using the Quran and Sunnah. Of course, sometimes we don't use the ayah straight away because they might just back off like that. But we use their, their language, the language they're familiar with. But it's coming from the Quran in their own language of philosophy, logic and rationality. So may Allah give us the ability to learn and to help others to see the light of Islam. Wa akhir da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.